Hey guys, it's Lauren. I am using the iPad again because I'm too tired and lazy to go and sit in front of a computer. So it's probably going to be jostly. Um, sorry, not sorry. Um, I thought I would just let you guys know how Pagan Pride Day went because it went really well. Um, and some of you were actually there, which was super cool. Um, I like it when people come out and it's, it's so weird, uh, meeting people who begin conversations with, oh, I read your blog or, oh, I found you on YouTube or something like that. It's just really surreal and strange and it's wonderful. Um, but it's just bizarre because I think sometimes we forget that our, our actions on the internet impact regular life like like there actually isn't a distinction between the internet and real life like they're actually the same space uh, we just occupy them differently um, and the people that you're interacting with on the internet are people and they have feelings and preferences and habits and all kinds of things about their lives that you don't get to see when you only see them on the internet um, but it's it's sort of a nice reminder of the humanity behind the internet which is probably one of the weirder things I've said on my channel. But anyway, it's really cool meeting people who say that they found me online because it makes me feel like, I don't know, like I have some kind of, <laughs> some kind of voice or impact. Um, anyway, Pagan Pride Day for me was super busy because I was on an interfaith panel and I also ran my first workshop which was a very interesting experience. Um, so the panel is something that I did last year. And last year, I've been on academic panels before. I've done conferences. I've spoken in front of strangers. I've, I've done the whole like audience moderator conversation thing. So I was really comfortable with that. Um, but I, last year was the first time I'd ever done it specifically with regard to my religious tradition um, and it was a really interesting experience you know they're definitely hits and misses but overall it it's totally worthwhile and um, a lot of fun this year I uh, had some market improvements which was cool um, but it's it's an interesting experience and a humbling one to be there essentially as a representative of your tradition or your group. Um, there were six or seven panelists, I can't remember because there was a change up in lineup right at the last minute, but um, many of us were from specific pagan or witch traditions. Um, others were definitely solitary, more eclectic-ish um, kind of practitioners, which is also cool. Um, but being a representative of your tradition when it's not like anybody else in your tradition voted for you, <laughs> right? Um, I mean, you're only up there because the organizers know who you are and thought that you might be a good speaker or might be interesting. It's not because it's not because other gardenerians anywhere thought that I should be speaking at all. Um, so that just that just makes it all the more weighty because you want to represent your community broadly. And you want to represent your coven and the people under you, and you also don't want to sh like shame your upline or something. Um, so I I undertake responsibilities like that with a lot of care, and I hope that that came across. Um, anyway, it was a lot of fun. I think there was some good conversation. Interfaith is a really strange thing for me. Uh, I've I've touched on this a little bit in blogs. And I won't say too much because I actually, it's not that I necessarily have a super strong opinion, um, but the concept of interfaith makes me feel like, kind, it's like it's kind of, makes me feel kind of woolly inside or something. I don't know. It just, it doesn't sit comfortably. And it's sort of a weird thing to say as a religious studies scholar and as someone who has done ethnography, as someone who spends a lot of time interacting with people who are not part of my own tradition. Um, for those of you who don't know, I do a lot of work with a local evangelical church. Um, I 
work at an evangelical church and I love my evangelical friends and we disagree about a whole hell of a lot. Um, but I mean that, that love is still there and I want to respect that. But at the same time, I've never been an advocate of the idea that all religions or all like good religions or good spirituality, because spirituality is the word that we use now when it's a religion that we like, um, that all, all Silver Ravenwolf's uh, term is positive religions, that all positive religions essentially have the same underlying message. Um, the, the expression that often gets used is we're all paths up the same mountain or something to that effect. Like we're all just walking different trails in the same forest or something like that. Um, and that, you know, like that's, that's a nice idea. And I think that there's merit to that to some extent, but working in religious studies, doing ethnography, hanging out with people who are really, really different. Um, I've learned that actually we often believe very different things, um, and we don't come to the same kind of conclusions, we don't have the same kinds of values, and to say that we're all the same on some level, usually what people mean is that we're all human, we all are worthy of respect, and I'm on board with that, um, but... I, f I just feel like the concept of interfaith can get a little hairy because I don't want to put across the idea that I think all religions are the same or that they're all equally good and correct. I think there's a lot of really fucked up shit that happens that people call religion and spirituality and certainly are those things um, that shouldn't be tolerated. You know, like I... Uh, I don't... I don't know. I just, I'm uncomfortable with the kind of blanket that interfaith seems to be sometimes. Um, and I don't know that that necessarily is what came across at the panel this year. Um, but I like to assert the differences over the similarities sometimes, and it depends on circumstances, um, obviously. But anyway, being on an interfaith panel puts me in an odd position on many levels. But worthwhile experience, interesting, I thought. Um, the audience seemed to have a good time. Um, I said the word dick like three times and um, among other things I'm pretty sure. So <laughs> you'll have that. Um, yes. So the workshop went well. Um, my workshop, which I also wrote a little bit about somewhere probably, um, my workshop was about constructions of nature and basically um, making the argument essentially that nature, capital N, is as much a human construct as anything else we might construct and arguing against this dichotomy between um, civilization and nature or civiliz or um, nature and the man-made or whatever, whatever labels you want to attach to that dichotomy. Um, I think it's artificial, and I think it's really, really problematic and harmful in a lot of ways. And that's another video that I, who knows if I'll ever make. But oh, I have made it, I'm pretty sure, when I talked about the Appalachian Trail and being afraid of bears. Um, but anyway, I did about an hour-long workshop on that subject. I tried to get a lot of audience participation, and it seemed to go well. Nobody complained. I didn't get thrown out. I still swore a bunch, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And I like the idea of doing workshops in the future. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll pitch it at Free Spirit Gathering or something. Um, anyway, met a lot of people and other stuff. I don't even know. You know, it was, it was kind of stressful and overwhelming and I'm super introverted. So by the end of the day, I was just exhausted and had to go lay on my face. But Pagan Pride Day is a good experience. If you ever have the opportunity to go to one nearby, it's a national movement. So if you're in the U.S., I don't know what they're doing in other countries, but um, check it out. And it usually happens in the fall, right around the equinox. Um, but it's a really good experience. It's a good opportunity to meet other people who are local. Um, it's a good 
opportunity to shop with local merchants and vendors and crafters and whatever. Um, and Foxfire distributed its zine. Our zine is for sale on Etsy, as I said, and I, <laughs> I'm, I'm very gratified to see that it's actually selling. It makes me happy, and people seem to be enjoying it. So um, check out the previous video if you're interested, um, if you remember zines, because they're awesome. And passing that out was probably a highlight. So we've got a bunch of people who want to contribute to the next issue, so hopefully you'll see some more variety. Anyway, that is all. I hope you're all well. And goodbye.